Good day guys, I'm an award painter and in this video I'm going to be showcasing my Exalted Sorcerers and Araman. I'll catch you after the intro. So as I said at the start of the video, this is going to be a showcasing on the Exalted Sorcerers that I've been painting over the last couple of years. And I'll also be showing off Araman. Now for those of you that are new to the hobby, the range of models I've been painting belong to a group called the Thousand Sons. And the Thousand Sons are a traitor legion dating back to the Horus Heresy in the 30,000 millennium. And uh, they're easily recognisable these days for wearing their blue teal Egyptian themed armour, their spontaneous mutations and the uh, the interesting sorcery that they have. So what has this video got to offer you? Well, um, in a minute, I'm going to be giving you a decent show and tell of each model that I've painted, including Nariman. And during that footage, I'm going to be giving you a decent rundown of how I felt before, during and after uh, painting the models. So I can share with you my experience on how on how I how I would go about painting them again if I was if I had the option, and um, what I would do differently, what I'd keep the same, you know, those sort of um, those sort of key points. So it'll be information that you know, if you, for those of you that are out there that are keen to develop in your painting skills, or you you'd wish to paint the Thousand Suns yourself, you'd be able to go away with this information from what I've learned and be able to then uh, apply it to your thought process when you come to painting something of a similar level or um, or your own army of thousand sons. Um, so yeah, how about we go on the showcase? Exalted Sorcerer number one. I had no idea how to start this ball rolling, but the first thing I painted was his backpack and cape. This was probably a good shout as I was chuffed with how the cape turned out and kind of boosted my confidence for the rest of the model. My favourite thing to paint however was his head. Not only did it make a change to painting helmets but I had fun glazing the purple tones to his hood. Because of how smooth and large in surface the hood is, it made glazing a good practice. Something however that was unique to painting on this model was the fallen space wolf under his boot. It was nice to have some actual edges to highlight for a change after 20 Rubik Marines. The gems I painted were also a treat. After painting power armour and cloth, it was a change in texture to paint something small and vibrant. Overall, I, I really felt like I achieved a nice clean and tidy paint job to this Exalted Sorcerer, which definitely was a good starting point to a potential challenging task overall. So, yeah. I'm happy. One down, three exalted sorcerers to go. So for me on this one, um, you'll notice as well as the showcase goes on, uh, I started off with the most simplest model out of them all to begin with. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, you don't want to peak too soon, do you? Uh, so this this model was my opportunity to sort of dip my toe in the water to sort of gauge the sort of level of detail and complexity. I wanted to um, apply to these models and, um, and yeah, uh, to be honest, it, it didn't, didn't take much of a push for me to want to, to go absolute max 10 on these, especially with the cloths. I mean, I'm a sucker for capes and, and loin cloths and tabards. I love trying to um, like do it paint as impressively as I can on the cloth. And you'll, you'll see that in the other Exalted Sorcerers as we go on with this video. Um, yeah, let's get on with the next one, shall we? Here we have the second Exalted Sorcerer. This one you can actually tell is from the original box set as well. This model is so dynamic, it's, it's unbelievable. I was a little bit intimidated when I came to painting this model at first purely because they, I did not know where to start. As you can tell, there, there's no one, you know, the, the, there's, there is no, you can't look at it and say, yeah, this bit's the biggest part, I'll start with that. Normally you, you go off with the power armor, but there's hardly anything on the power armor, there's just one arm. Yeah. So instead, 
what I ended up doing was with the previous one, I kept the backpack separate with the cape and I focused on that first, painted in the blue details and the gold trim and then worked on the, the cape and it, that, that process worked, it was really good. And for those of you that are interested to know what a subassembly is, so what I would do is I'd take the backpack and I'd drill a little hole into it with a handheld drill, drill and then poke this stretched out paper clip in there and with a very little bit of super glue stick it on and then we've got it into a little cork which we can use as a holding handle for when I start to paint it and then when the time was right because there was such little amount of glue on there I could just clearly snap it off and then stick her on and there she is the smoke was really fun to paint very colorful I was aiming for the sort of warp flame tones but um, I don't know, in the end it's just a rainbow <laughs> isn't it at the end of the day. But yeah, really enjoyed painting that. Another experimental thing I attempted was painting the uh, the cape underneath here. So I went from a, a, a nice light pink going down to a dark purple. This, this was 100% cuffed. I had no idea what I was doing. I just based in pink, based in purple, blended them in, but then I had to work out how to do the highlights and as you can see it hasn't really got any highlights on it because in the end I just gave up my head just exploded trying to work out how to mix the paints to make sense but it still looks good I'm happy with it and it's a learning curve another learning curve is working with textures feathers I mean a lot of people paint um, me included would paint such areas just flat with flat colors but um, it's good to take advantage of these sort of small details. It really adds character to the model. Just freehanding some simple, consistent lines in there. And now they actually look like feathers. Nothing really else to talk about on this model. The gems as well. I'll, I'll mention that quickly. I really enjoy painting these gems now. After watching Darren Adam paint his gems um, on YouTube, I, I really enjoy the method and I love painting gems now, as you can tell. <laughs> I, I, you know, these are fantastic. Right, let's move on. The most dynamic model I have ever touched. It, that model is so impressive to look at. And every time I look at it now, I, I don't see my paint job. I, just, I still just focus on the sculpt itself. It is amazing. Um, so yeah, painting that model is a was a huge jump from painting the first Exalted Sorcerer. There are so many textures on that model. There is a lot going on. But um, when, you, when you come to models like that, the best approach for me personally is to just one thing at a time. Just start in the middle of the model. If it's so complex and there is not one aspect of the model like the armor for example that dominates it for you to start with first then just look at the middle of the model and uh, make your way you know paint your way outwards that way you're less likely to rub and scrub off any paintwork that you will have worked so hard on with your fingertips as you maneuver the model around your hands so yeah I mean uh, with the first one I painted the backpack and cape first and I sort of stuck to that process for every other Exalted Sorcerer. And um, yeah, that, that is definitely a good idea. Don't hesitate to paint sub-assemblies um, if you feel you've got the option. Uh, definitely worth it and you'll feel a lot better for it afterwards as well. A lot less stressful than trying to um, curve your paintbrush in and around certain objects to sort of get to where you want to get to. Sub assemblies is a good way forward. Um, but yeah, start from the center, work your way out, and, um, and, you, and you, you shouldn't go too far wrong. Next. And here we have Exalted Sorcerer number three. Again, from the Exalted Sorcerer original box set. This model is probably my, was my favorite paint job in the end, because it just, to me, it really harmonizes together really nicely. The armor's blue, the gold's gold, the parchment's rough, and the stave glows. 
I mean, as far as OSL goes, that's not that bad considering there's nothing around it to, to reflect off of to actually create the OSL effect to. So I was quite pleased on how I managed to still simulate that with just the surface of the stave itself. Parchment, that was fun. Not. Trying to paint those fiddly little glyphs. What a ball ache. But worth it. I've painted 30 Rubik Marines now. And I've applied those little glyphs on all of their loincloths. So that wasn't a too bad. I was quite happy with painting the zinc symbol. Moving around we've got the lovely pink purple theme going on with the uh, cape at the bottom. This time you can actually see I've attempted some form of highlights going on in the cape. In a way it's worked but in a way it hasn't because to me the, you look at it they are doing their own thing. It is quite a harsh line there between the pinks and purples but I did achieve what I wanted to do you know I, I wanted a highlight that worked and I did I got one and I think the reason why it doesn't work is because there's still the, these are two different tones whether they're blended in in the middle or not these are two different tones and I think from what I've learned recently on the other Exalted Sorcerers I've painted and Araman you need just one common tone at least in everything and I've highlighted these, I think, with two different tones as well. And I think you just need to pick one and get them to blend in with the, the, with the, the other tones you use on the cape. Get one tone in common for the entire thing. And it, I think that's what brings these sort of multi-toned uh, textures together. So yeah, something to think about, should you ever wish to try it. Scooching it around. This cape is I'm, I swear I painted a base for Screaming Pink, but it looks like a corn red job. I cannot remember. I've, been, I've painted these models for such a long time now. This one took me uh, about two and a half months to paint. No, no, three months to paint. No, this one was three months to paint. The gold details are coming on. Really enjoy painting them now. And something you, I, I really thought was, you know, well, to me was brand new. And I didn't do too bad with was these vials that you can't see. Fantastic, brilliant. But yeah, a little round vial there. But the one that I think I felt I did the best on, which is the one you definitely can't see, which is tucked away just in the back there. I felt like that one had the best finish. Yeah. Uh, oh, and one more thing I want to point out on this is the base. Now these are commissioned models and. Um, the chap that asked me to paint them for him he wanted me to leave the bases alone so that he could uh, base them himself to match the rest of his army which is a fair one i mean who would not want the rest of all you know, their models to fit in with one another that's just that's just logic but i had to do something because you know it's been a while since i've painted a base because because of this commission and but I thought I, it was, it's a harmless um, effect to do, was to then glaze on the base itself. And I had a go at the Black Fortress method of painting it. If you ever come across the Black Fortress models, how they have that kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, sort of, yeah, that. I mean, it doesn't come out very well on camera here, I don't think. But having the nice smooth black to vibrant transitions if you ever want to get into having a go at glazing, doing this to the painting these bases like this is a fantastic way to go about practicing it, because glazing is ideally done on large flat surfaces. It's like the easiest sort of scenario to be in when practicing to glaze. Yeah, model three complete. This exalted sorcerer was probably my favourite to paint. Um. By the time I got to, you know, I'd done the first two and uh, and now I'm getting pretty warmed up and sort of um, in in sync with how Exalted Sorcerers need to be painted. And I, I felt a lot more calm, patient, focused, and I knew what I wanted. Uh, for example, the OSL effect on that stave. I wanted that. 
I had a good think about it, how it could be done. And personally, I feel I, I nailed it. I feel like I did a really good job on it, especially because there's nothing around it to go on to. So you are relying on the actual object itself that it that has the source of light to begin with. But yeah, really enjoyed it. I, I can't stop looking at it. It's just, again, the, di the, the, the dynamic um, way that the model sculpted it's not quite as um, uh, as in your face as the second Exalted Sorcerer I painted, but it's nice and subtle. It's really smooth, calm, and, and that's the way I felt uh, when I was painting it, and how I, you know, how I chose to how I chose to go about doing it. Yeah. So I'll look at the uh, last Exalted Sorcerer now. And here we have Exalted Sorcerer number four. Another fantastic model, accompanied with a Discus Inch, something I really enjoy painting purely because it was diff a different uh, thing to paint compared to something with two arms, two legs, and a head. Now, a couple of good things I really enjoyed painting on this model was straight away, as you can see, was the warp flames um, just hovering above his shoulders there. Pretty much used the same approach as I took on the smoke coming out the arse of the previous Exalted Sorcerer. Sorry, wrong, the, first, the second Exalted Sorcerer. Um, but as you can see close enough, there are uh, little speckles of ash I've managed to dot in there floating about. Something I, I was really happy with the the look of after I, paint, after I tried it. The armour on this one is looking a little rather, is looking a bit flat. Uh, very, you, know, you can just see it's very solid blue tones. They stick out. Um, as you know, it looks good, and it sort of reflects the way they look on the box art. But um, I don't know. I don't think it's my way of painting anymore. Just with flat colours, as you'll see when we uh, take a look at Araman. The swords were good to paint. Um, really good uh, glazing practice there. You know, with this, the shape of them. They're long. They're slender. Plenty of room to sort of, you know, whip the, that whip that brush up and down to sort of practice your your, your blending. And then, but the electrical transition, you know, the electrical effect on it was a bit of a, a ball. Like I did, I must have attempted that about four or five times, just you know, repainting it and having another go, just struggling to get it to look right and look, at, you know, look the same on every single sword on each side. But now I think we did it. I think it looks good, and obviously I went with red. Red tones there because it's you know the complementary colour to green. Ties in with the red smoke under his disc and the gems. Yeah, I think it works quite well. Moving around, we have the uh, the cape, very pink. Rather than basing it with a scream of pink, I actually based it straight away with uh, pink horror. Um, yeah, definitely something to to learn by very vibrant and of course i took it even further and took the the sort of warp flame tones and had a got free hand in something on the on, you know, on the back there that that wasn't too bad to paint you know once you've got the shape down you know the the tones that i've used on it was quite relatively easy to sort of blend and smoothen out so i was quite happy with that and the eye yeah Moving around now, back to the front. Yeah, nothing really else to talk about this model. Shall we just crack on now to the main event? Oh yes, Araman. Where's my lord Araman? <sighs> uh, we'll talk about the Discus Inch first. So it was nice for me personally painting something that was different to a typical a uh, human shaped silhouette, shall we say. So I really had to use my own initiative to try and work out how best to paint that gold effect on top of the disc. And I'm, I'm, I was quite happy with how it turned out. Uh, yeah, 100%, because you'll see in a minute that I painted the same effect on Ironman's disc. Um, with, this, with the disc inch itself, I tried to keep all the techniques relatively simple. And what I mean by that is I tried to avoid glazing and wet blending and stuck with just simple layering um, because what I wanted and what, I, what will be available as well is I want to make a tutorial on for you guys on how I painted this disc. 
but I didn't want to try and spoon feed you more wet blending, more glazing, because you know, you, I think you've had enough of that for those of you that have been sticking with the channel up until now. So yeah, I, I thought I'd go about a different way of doing it and the techniques are simple and yeah, you, you'll see, you'll, I'll explain more, more about it in the tutorial when it comes out. Uh, moving on from there, you've got the, uh, the actual sorcerer himself. A couple of things that I took away personally from this model was painting the, the warp flames on the backpack. Really enjoy painting them. It's it's nice to actually paint something that you're you're actually you know 100% in in the know of how you're going to go about painting it, because majority of the time when I'm painting these exalted sorcerers, I, I haven't really got a clue how I'm going to go about painting it, and you just go into it expecting to, to have to repaint it all again. Um, but for a change, it was nice to say, yeah, I know what I'm going to do. I've tried the, this method already, and it's, I know it's going to work. And it did. And the reason I did, I haven't been painting loads of warp flames off camera or anything, but uh, the main confidence booster was when I painted the, the sort of rainbow smoke effect that's coming out of the second Exalted Sorcerer's arse, um, which you'll notice you know, I've used the same tones and uh, applied them in the same way. Uh, and yeah, because I had that one in the bag already, this this one turned out quite, you know, the what flame was enjoyable to paint. Uh, moving on from there, you've got the power swords. Um, again, well, power swords, I haven't really had a lot of experience with power swords, or power, power weapons in general. And when I have, I've, it's been painted with true metallic uh, paints. And that was back when I wasn't very happy with how I painted true metallics in the first place. So we'll say I've never painted a power sword before, shall we? And it was nice for a change to be able to try this effect with an actual colour as opposed to silver or gold. And um, yeah, with the green tones. And moving on, you know, to add to that, it, it, was, um, it was definitely a learning curve for me on painting the electric effect that I uh, tried to develop on the blades. Because I, I felt personally, yeah, we need to work on these. Um, it's not as simple as just painting a load of squiggly little lines and expecting it to look like a lightning effect. It doesn't work like that at all, no. Sometimes, e even now, I still think that maybe you can get away with such simple um, techniques to get a really good effect. Nah, if you want something good, you've got to really think about it and and, uh, and, and own, own the idea. So, yeah, you can definitely expect some future tutorials on painting power weapons because yeah, that, that's now on my to-do list to, uh, to, to nail in. I've got to get those power weapons. So yeah. Shall we look at uh, Araman? Oh, drum roll please. And here we have Araman. I'm so happy with how he turned out. I, I think he looks really good. So beginning with the, the uh, Discus Inch, I had to make it look very similar to the previous Exalted Sorcerer's Discus Inch, just to make it you know seem like it came from the same store. But to make it that little bit better, I introduced the OSL effect going around the, the glyphs, which I don't know why I chose pink, but I'm glad I did because it ties in really nicely with the blues and the golds. And I think that's mainly because the you know he's got a bit of a triad colour scheme going on there with the blues, the reds and the yellows. So yeah, happy with that. Looking at Aaron himself, the tabard, that's the, you'll notice it's been, you know, I painted it with really dark tones and that's purely because um, it, it dominates, you know, at least a third of that model if you don't include the discus inch. And I mean, it, you wouldn't be able to tell that he's got, you know, it's purple if it wasn't for the highlights. And the reason being is because I didn't want the tabard to draw too much attention from uh, from the eyes. Um, yeah, because the main focal point at the end of the day is his head. And I think I've, I've managed to achieve this quite nicely because, you know, when you look at the model, well, me anyway, you know, I go straight to his head. And I can look down at his tabard if I wanted to. But before I can look away from the model, I have to look at his head again. So I think it's worked out quite nicely. Next thing I want to point out is... The smoke, um, I wasn't originally going to paint these bits pink that form around his hand. I was going to continuously pink, paint it the same tones as the rest of it. And I'm glad I painted it pink because I noticed something was going on here with the model. You've got this triangle effect going on. You've got this over here, 
this over here and this over here and I've seen in a lot of really well painted models that they have this kind of triangle formation going on around this section of the model uh, to help bring balance to the colors and, and for it, the whole model to harmonize really nicely and yeah so I've just gone with pink pink eyes pink power source in the stave and pink smoke yeah I, th I think that was a really good idea there the stave I, I really enjoyed painting the stave it was probably you know apart from the cape which you'll see in a minute by far like one of the best things I've, I've ever painted um, I had an idea I, I, I pictured what I wanted and I, I, I you know put that that thought to action so I treated these like you know as though they were plasma coils and you know I tried to emit this kind of glowy effect in there as if it was a plasma gun with a, a little bit of a you know where the energy just draws to the, the narrowest point of the stave as though you can just picture a kind of like electric shock just occurring between these two parts of the stave I think the effect looks really good moving around the model all right a better shot there of the smoke and then bringing you to the rear of the model we have the cape and if you've not pinged it yet another really cool OSL effect I had again another idea I had and I wanted I wanted to another sort of pink glowy effect going on at the back I mean let's face it when we play this game we, we only get to enjoy the backs of our models because when we're, when we're moving up the battlefield that's all we see is the back of our models unless you're like me and every now and then just taking a sneaky little wander over to the other side of the table peering over the shoulder of my opponent and he's like there looking at me thinking what, what are you doing oh nothing mate I'm just, just looking at my models before they go back in the box <laughs> so yeah I had to do something really nice on the back of the model for that for that reason uh, and not to mention we've got the cape really enjoyed painting this cape I've been on the pursuit for a really like the best looking cape for for years now and I think I've done a really good job on this one because I just can't take my eyes off of it the colors are brilliant the transitions uh yeah I really love I really love it I mean rather than using browns in here I've gone with dark purples to help tie in with the the tabard on the front yeah really enjoy painting that so I hope you like Aramim I I mean he's by far the best model I've ever painted and I'm always harping on about this that it's a personal opinion but I say that we're only as good as the last model we painted which is why I'm in such a good mood about this model so yeah Araman let me know what you think do you like it do you not like it let me know Araman what a model I loved painting him uh, I really enjoy painting with such dark tones to begin with on, on, on anything on any aspect of the model and then gradually glaze in or wet blend just just building up the lighter tones to it because you can just it's like it's like pulling the curtain back on, on a model and letting the light just slowly build up and just to reveal the uh, it's true it's true nature of how it should look yeah definitely 100% really enjoy painting him and my, my favorite part to paint uh, it was the cape I mean the, the stave was fun don't get me wrong that was probably the my best idea for the model was paint the way I painted the glow effects on the on the stave but I really enjoyed painting the cape purely because I've had a lot of doubt personally on glazing which is why you'll see uh, you'll notice in a lot of my tutorials I usually wet blend to get my transitions um, but after painting this model the tabard the cape the smoke and the, my glazing I feel personally I've really sort of um, yeah jumped a milestone on on the thought pro you know the knowledge and experience of, of being able to do it getting the right consistency of water to paint getting the you know 
the right amount of paint on the brush, understanding how to control, manipulate, and also correct any errors that you, you, you may make when glazing. So yeah, I, I'm so grateful for having this opportunity to paint Ironman in, in, in the way I decided to. Yeah, really did. On that note, I think we can call that a wrap. Thanks for watching guys. I really hope you found this video useful. As I look forward, now that I can announce that this Thousand Suns commission is finished and you can expect a huge range of variety of models that I'll be painting in the near future with some kind of influence from you guys as well. I mean, I enjoy painting models 100% and but I enjoy even more, you know, helping you guys out. So, you know, get in touch, let me know what you'd like to see painted and uh, I'll see if I can make it happen. Thanks for watching guys. I really do appreciate your time. Don't be shy to mix those paints. Ta-ra. <laughs>